Hey all, in this video I would like to provide you with an update on my rotating display development. Let me start just showing where I am with the development and later on I will explain what has been changed and improved compared to the previous version. As you can see here, the display is running and it's spinning at relatively high speed right now um, because I would like to have a smooth image and that's the most noticeable change compared to the previous video. I'm now using a new camera app. Uh, the video is recorded with an iPhone. I'm using the Blackmagic camera app which allows me to set the shutter speed manually. I'm now using a shutter speed of a 24th um, second per frame and I'm recording 24 uh, frames per second. So basically the shutter is pretty much open all the time, which allows me to really get a nice averaging of the image as the disc is spinning fast. Now it's really um, smooth as you can see. However, um, I'm running the motor at pretty high speed now and you might uh, hear the, the motor. Usually uh, without the video camera, I would run it um, a little bit slower so that it's um, almost um, not noticeable. But this is for demonstration purposes um, only. Now, let's have a look at um, the different functions. As you can see here next to the um, display, I have my uh, mobile phone. In the mobile phone, I'm running um, the web browser and um, I have entered the um, web address of the display um, here, which gives me the user interface for the um, display. So I can control the display with my mobile phone. Now, first of all, you can see um, here a bar which allows me to set the brightness. It's at 30% right now, so I can uh, set it higher. It will be extremely bright now, too bright for the um, video camera. So I go back to uh, 30 or 35%. Okay, um, the second thing I can uh, set here in this um, user interface is the modes. So a first mode here is the IP address. When I start the display, it shows me the SSID of my um, Wi-Fi router, as you can see here, and it gives me the uh, IP address of the display. So I can enter the address here, which I have already done, uh, and that allows me to control the display. The next mode is a analog clock. Um, so as you can see, I, I'm using a very uh, simple um, uh, clock face. There, you can load more sophisticated ones, as I will explain in a minute. Then there is a digital clock mode. So I have the time with seconds, I have the date and also the day of the week. The next mode is uh, what I call a logo clock. So it's a large time display with uh, seconds and below there, there is um, kind of a logo. It's very easy to load um, different logos and uh, you can change that easily. The next and probably nicest mode is the um, weather display. Now the display loads weather information for my town here from the internet. I'm using openweathermap.org as a, a weather service. It's free and you can uh, choose the location where you are. And now you can see here, um, it's partly cloudy, uh, 25.6 degrees centigrade and 58% humidity, quite nice temperature. So there's one more mode where you can uh, display an image. Uh, I've just taken this flower here and you can uh, load any other image. Now I will not go too much into details on how to control this display because that is in my um, first video um, already. Uh, just to give you a flavor, um, there are configuration screens like um, this one here. You can enter the API key for openweathermap.org. You need to do that in order to get access to um, the 
whether service that's um, free of charge, um, you just need to, to register. Uh, let's go back, um, then you can configure um, Wi-Fi, you have your um, SSID up here, which you can enter, and then you enter your uh, password for um, the Wi-Fi. Furthermore, I have a, a file browser, the uh, flash disk of the, the microcontroller allows you to uh, store certain images. So when I go in here, you see up here the um, files which are on my flash disk. There are the blue ones are files and the black ones are folders. So for example, if I go into the variables um, folder, there are more files in here. For example, um, the country where I am or um, some, uh, yeah, this is my location, Freiburg, as you can see here, there's a nice uh, preview. So um, we can also go back with the two dots. So I'm one level up now. Um, that is a um, file browser. There are all functions here, which you usually need in a file, a file browser, like uploading files. So I can load up file, up, upload files from my mobile phone to the microcontroller, I can download files and the other way around. I can make a directory, rename files or directories, delete, copy, move files and also directories. So um, that's quite useful when you organize the flash disk. Then I have a, a what I call an image manager. Uh, here we can select a, a certain image for um, display, for example. Um, so right now, uh, I'm, uh, as you can see here, I have selected the file uh, flower.rd40, which is my image format, uh, and that's displayed here. Now we could, um, for example, uh, choose here the logo, which I uh, have also uploaded to the flash disk. And now we select this image here for the display in the image mode. Now there's no time because it just shows the um, logo. Okay, so let's uh, close that. Um, there's one a new function compared to the previous version and that is um, the selection of a time zone. It turned out that there are uh, many users all over the world who would like to, to use this um, rotating clock and this is why I've now um, implemented here the different time zones. Um, now maybe before we uh, before we do that we go back to a now let's use the digital clock in our time zone again. Uh, I'm located in Germany and uh, now uh, we can choose a, a different time zone for example here time zone in uh, China and um, if I select that, as you can see, it's midnight now in China. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. I go back to, um, to Germany. Um, that, these are all the functions. So um, I hope you can see the improvement, um, at least in the image quality. Now let's talk about the changes of the hardware. So I will turn off the display and we wait a second until the uh, rotation has stopped. So let's stop this here. That's pretty fast. Okay, now um, I will take this apart so that you can see the different uh, parts of the display. Um, so there is the LED row, which is most important. Uh, and there are two microcontrollers, as you uh, will see in a second. So these two screws, which I uh, have taken out now, uh, they hold the display to the motor. So now I can take that off. And what you see here below is the power supply. You can see a coil here, and there's the other coil here on my uh, display. And uh, these two coils, transmit the power from the power supply to the display wirelessly, which is uh, absolutely critical in order to get that high rotation speed and also a, a, a smooth and quiet rotation. 
So as you can see here, um, I'm now used SMD components in this revision of the display and that's the major change to the uh, previous version. In the previous version I had the um, uh, microcontroller boards, a, I used an Arduino Nano and a um, ESP 01S microcontroller and now I have put the microcontrollers here on this uh, PCB directly which gives me just much more flexibility and also more room. As you can see, the chips are much smaller. These two down here are actually USB to serial converters. So it's much more convenient to program the two microcontrollers now. You just plug in here, these are uh, two USB connectors. This is the one for the ESP uh, 12F. That's um, this microcontroller here and the other um, USB connector um, is connected to the ATmega 328P microcontroller. So that's um, basically the, um, the improvement uh, as you can see. So it's SMD components, it's um, nicely integrated. The biggest advantage of SMT components, however, are with the LEDs. And I'm now also using here uh, SMD LEDs. They have a pretty perfect size. So the width of these LEDs is uh, 1.8 millimeters, so a little bit below two millimeters. So I could maintain the two millimeter spacing as I had also in the previous version of my display where I used uh, discrete and threaded um, LEDs. But this is much more convenient because it was um, manufactured by the supplier of this um, PCB board and um, uh, so I, I don't have to, to solder it manually. There's just one component left which is uh, threaded and that's the, um, that is the hall sensor. I will get rid of that in the next uh, release. I just found out when I uh, had finished this, uh, this board that exactly that hall sensor is also available as an SMT component. So I will make that change in the next revision. Yeah, guys, that's basically it. Uh, maybe one last word on the um, LEDs. Um, I'm not entirely happy with these LEDs. Um, the basic requirement is on the brightness. I need very bright LEDs with um, a high power and the um, brightness needs to be at least 1200 uh, millicandela. The, the choice is not very large because usually SMD LEDs have much lower brightness. Um, however, I would like to have LEDs uh, which are a little bit smaller because that would increase the sharpness of the image. So I will uh, check out what is available and uh, will make that change as well in the next revision. Yeah, so much about the news. I will keep you posted about further developments and believe me, that's not the last idea I have. Uh, I have uh, more plans to further develop this and also improve it. So uh, stay tuned. Bye bye.